Constructor functions in JavaScript are basically used to define a blueprint for creating objects. In other programming languages such as C++ and Java, we have classes for defining a blueprint for creating objects. But in JavaScript, you can use a function to define your blueprint and based on that blueprint, you can create several objects. In this lecture, let's understand constructor functions in detail. I will answer following five questions related to a function constructor. And let's start by answering why we need a function constructor in first place. To answer this question, let's assume a situation where we want to create hundreds of objects with same properties and methods. So far, we have been using object literals to create an object. Let's say we want to create an object with name, year of birth and occupation property. So for that, we will use object literal notation to create that object. Here I am creating this John object using this object literal notation and I want to have name, occupation and year of birth properties. So let's say name is John. Year of birth, let's say John was born in 1990. And we also want to have this occupation property. So let's say occupation of John is that he is a teacher. Now, if we have to create more objects like this with name, year of birth and occupation property, then again, we will use object literals. So here I have created two more objects, Mark and Mary with this name, year of birth and occupation property. Now, if I have to create hundreds of objects like this with this same name, year of birth and occupation property, then using object literals to create those objects is a laborious task and is not a very efficient way of defining objects. And that's where function constructors comes into picture. So let's now answer our second question. What is a function constructor? A function constructor or a constructor function is a function that initializes an object. In simple terms, a constructor function is simply a function which acts as a pattern or a template for creating objects. A constructor function acts like a blueprint and is used to create instances and implement inheritance. To define a function constructor, a function is used. It can be a normal function or function expression. Let's say we have created this person function constructor with this name, year of birth and occupation property and calculate age method. So this person constructor will act as a blueprint for creating objects. And using this blueprint, we can create several objects. Here I'm creating John, Mark and Mary objects from this person function constructor. And if you notice, this John, Mark and Mary objects also have this name, year of birth and occupation property and this calculate age method. So this person function constructor is acting as a blueprint for these three objects. And since this John, Mark and Mary objects are created from this person function constructor, you can say that John, Mark and Mary are actually the instances of this person function constructor. So enough theory, let's understand function constructor with practical example. So let's answer our third question how to define a function constructor. Before that, let's comment this code here and let's see how to define a function constructor. So to define a function constructor, we use a function. This function can be either a regular function or a function expression. I'm going to use a function expression and I want to call this function person. The convention for naming a function constructor is that the first letter of each word should be in caps. So here I have this person. So the first letter of this person is in caps. And then we assign a function to this person variable. Now, the values which you want to have for your properties of object 
will be passed as the parameter of this function. So we want to have name, year of birth and occupation property for our objects. Now the values for those properties will be passed to this function as its parameter. So let's call these parameters name, year of birth and occupation. And inside the body of this function constructor, we set these properties on this variable. So we say this dot name equals whatever value we have received in this name parameter. So equals name. Let's do the same thing for year of birth and occupation. So this dot year of birth equals year of birth and this dot occupation equals occupation. So we are setting this name year of birth and occupation properties on this variable and we are assigning it with the values which we will receive as the function parameter. Here we have added three properties. Let's also add a method to this function constructor and let's call it calculate age. So this dot calculate age. And let's say, let's assign a function to this calculate age method. Inside this function, first let's create a variable called current year. And to get the current year, I'm going to use the date object. This date object has get full year method, which will return us the current year. And now I want to calculate the age. So to calculate the age, we can simply subtract the year of birth from the current year. So current year minus this dot year of birth. And this will give us the age. And finally, we simply want to log this age in developer console. So console.log age. So this is our function constructor with three properties and a method. Now let's see how to create an object using this function constructor. So let's say I want to create this John object. So I'll say var John equals and then we use this new operator followed by the name of the constructor. And to this person constructor, we'll have to pass the values for name, year of birth and occupation parameters. So let's do that. Let's say name is John, year of birth 1990 and John is a teacher. So this is how we create an object using a constructor function. Before I explain how a constructor function works, let's first log this John object in the console and inspect it. Let's refresh the page and here we have this John object and this John object has this name, occupation and year of birth property and this calculate age method. And this John object is actually an instance of this person function constructor and that's why you see this person here. Now let's understand how a function constructor works. And this new operator plays a very important role in creating objects from a function constructor. A new operator does three things while creating an object from a function constructor. The first thing it does is that it creates an empty object on function constructor. Here, when we say var john equals new person, this new operator will first create an empty John object. So it will be similar to writing var John equals and the curly braces. So this is how we create an empty object using object literal. So this new operator will first create an empty John object. And then this person function constructor is called. So when this function is called, we are passing values for this name, year of birth and occupation as its argument. So these value will be received in these parameters. And then inside the body of this function constructor, we are setting name, year of birth and occupation property on this variable. Now, in case of normal function call, this variable points to the global object. And in case of glo 
a browser, the global object is the window object. But here we do not want to set these properties on window object. What we want is we want to set name, year of birth and occupation property and this calculate age method on this newly created John object. So the second thing which this new operator does is that it makes sure that this variable inside this function constructor points to that newly created empty object. And in this example, the newly created empty object is the John object. So now this variable will point to that John object. And on that empty John object, we are setting this name, year of birth and occupation property and this calculate age method. And it is sim similar to setting properties and methods on an empty object. So once we create this John object, we can set properties on this John object. We can set properties and methods on this John object like John.name. So here this is referring to John. So that means here it is similar to saying John.name and John.name equals the value which we are receiving for this name parameter. And what is the value we are receiving for this name parameter? We are receiving this value John. So it will set John.name equals John. John dot year of birth equals 1990 and John dot occupation equals teacher. And finally, it will set this calculate age method on this John object. So here we are saying John dot name equals John. And same thing goes for year of birth and occupation property and calculate age method. And finally, when the properties and methods are set on that object it finally returns that object so it is similar to saying return this and in this case this is pointing to the John object so John object will be returned from this function and that object will be stored in this John variable and that's why when we are logging this John we see the John object logged in the developer console and all these things will happen behind the scene. So all these things will be taken care of by this new operator. So we need not to expl explicitly return this object from this function that will be taken care by this new operator. So the second thing which this new operator does is that it makes sure that this variable in function constructor points to the newly created empty object. In our example, the newly created empty object was John object. So this new operator will make sure that this variable points to that newly created empty John object. And finally, once the properties and methods are set on that empty John object, it will return that object from the function constructor. And all these three things will happen behind the scene. So what will happen if we don't specify this new operator? If we don't specify this new operator, in that case, here we are making a regular function call. And in case of regular function call, this variable points to the global window object. So when we call this person function and we pass these values for its parameter, this function will be called and inside this function we are setting name, year of birth and occupation property on this variable. And since we are not using this new operator, and that means this is a regular function call, this variable will point to the window object. And on that window object, we are setting name, year of birth and occupation property and calculate age method. And since we are not returning anything from this function, undefined will be returned. And now if I save these changes and if I log this, you will see undefined is logged here. And that is because this function is not returning anything. So by default undefined will be returned that will be stored in this john variable and then we are logging that john variable so it should log undefined in the developer console as you can see here let's say we return the object this variable so let's say return this now this variable the value of this variable will be returned and what is the value of this variable it is the window object so window object will be returned, will be stored in this John variable. And then when we log this 
John variable in developer console, you will see the window object. Okay, and that is why using new operator while creating objects from a function constructor is very important because first it will create this empty John object. Then it will also make sure that this variable points to that empty John object and not to the global window object. And finally, it will return that object. Okay. So that is why this new operator is important while creating objects from a function constructor. So let's remove this because the object will be returned by this function that will be taken care by this new operator. So here we are only creating one object. Let's create two more objects. Let's create this mark object. So mark equals and then again we will use new operator followed by the name of the constructor function which is person in this case let's say name is mark mark was born in 1989 and he is a designer and let's log this mark object in developer console so console.log mark let's create one more object mary and let's save the changes and let's refresh the page so now we have this john mark and mary objects and all these three objects will have this name occupation and year of birth property and the calculate age method okay and this john mark and mary are created from this person function constructor so they are the instances of this person function constructor if you like this lecture like this video subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends.